Hello, this is Pastor Jim, and welcome to my homily that we'll be presenting on the 23rd of January. Unfortunately, we're, we decided to not worship this week because of the spike in COVID cases, including some in our own church. So we decided to take this one off. But I still had something I wanted to share. And so I appreciate you hooking in and listening here. Apologize that we haven't been online for the last couple of weeks, but our tech guy has uh, had some um, family business he's been taken care of. And, um, but we are able to do this homily. You know, remember a homily is kind of a less formal, um, less philosophical, less theological, but and more kind of a message about just the basic nature of what God can and wants to do in our life. It still fits in the context of the past few weeks that what I've been preaching on, which is essentially what it means to respond to Jesus's command. And if you remember what that command is, it's to love, love God with all your heart and love others as you love yourself. They call it the greatest commandment. And we've talked about some of the different ways that that command can be responded to. But in fact, I would say command isn't even the right word to use to describe that. I'd say um, it's a call. It's a commission that he gives us, a call that he gives us to be like he is with the world. He loves everyone, believers and not. He has unconditional agape love. And he cares for everyone, whether they're believers or not. In fact, most of the miracles he first did were with people who really didn't know who he was. They'd heard the rumors. So what we find in, in the story and the message of Jesus as we've been reading the red ink words in the Bible, is that he has an expectation, a calling on our lives to be the people in the world that bless, care, and love each other and people they don't even know. Now, for this homily, I wanted to look at one more dimension of that, one more aspect of that. And so the scripture I'm looking at again is from John 14. We've read a lot of John 14 the last few weeks. This one begins at verse 15. It says, if you love me, keep my commands, written in red, Jesus said it. And I will ask the Father and he will give you an advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives within you and will be in you. Well, you know who that advocate is. The Greek word translated here as advocate and, and as spirit is paraclete, which means the one that comes beside you, especially the paraclete, the scripture tells us, is one that can comfort us in ways that we can't even understand. You know, there's times when people have shared with me a concern that they've had, or I've had a concern, and where I really didn't know how to comfort them. And I'm a pastor, but sometimes it's hard to know what is the best way to comfort their heart, comfort their situation. And I know some people have probably asked that about me sometimes. Well, the reality is, is, as humans, we can comfort, and we can care, and we can love, as Scripture says, as Jesus says. But we can't do it as well as God can. God is the ultimate comforter, as it says right here. I will not leave you as orphans, Jesus says. I will come to you, and before long the world will not see me anymore but you will see me. 
But his intention is to send this comfort, this paraclete, the one that comes beside us. And the reason that matters to me now is because I think we need comforting. I think we all do. I think it, the very fact that we're not meeting today because of the COVID is still going on after two years, I think it reminds us that we kind of need each other. And especially in this time, here's what's happening is I was reading an article in the Atlantic that was saying that there are people who are losing their conscientiousness. Now, what is conscientiousness? Conscientiousness means their ability and their desire to have concern for other people. They, they, they just don't care how their actions impact somebody else. And that as this, in the, and for some reason, this has happened, has increased during the COVID. People are becoming less concerned about how their actions impact. You know, that's why they cut you off with a lack of concern. Sometimes it, it goes to an anti-conscientious mindset where they intentionally do you harm, do things that they want to bother you. That's, at least according to this article, seems to be increasing according to polls. This either, I don't care what, what you think or how it affects you, or even worse, I, I want to hurt you. I want to hurt your feelings. You know, they may not want to really physically hurt me, and even that happens. And we're seeing it on the news all the time. And so we're finding that we really are in a, in a place that I think is a great place for Christians to step in. And here's how they do it. They do it in the power of the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. We've talked about God the Father. We've talked about God the Son. Now let's talk about the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. We see in God's Word, the Holy Spirit is, man, is spoken of in a number of different ways. In this case, it talks about him as an advocate. And that means somebody who is there for you, who's got, their, got your back. Jesus calls himself the advocate, and he calls the Holy Spirit the advocate. Now, the Holy Spirit is fully God, just as Jesus is, and God the Father is. But they have different roles that they play in their relationship with us. And what, to me, is so important about the Holy Spirit, and it's hard to, it's hard to quantify this. It's hard to put this into words or, or to fully understand it, because the Holy Spirit is, by definition, spirit. Um, the word translated as spirit is wind. And it's hard, just, just as it's hard to catch a wind in your hand, it's hard to fully understand the Holy Spirit, just like it's hard to understand God the Father and God the Son totally. But in the same way that Jesus Christ came to earth to build a bridge between us and God, the Holy Spirit role is to indwell us is to become part of us, is to take it beyond just the role of incarnate God in, in Jesus into the role of indwelling God in us. This is unique to our tradition. Not every religion has that, has the actual personification of God Almighty wanting to indwell us to be part of us, and to be there for us. Now think about that for just a moment. What a wonderful thought. What a wonderful, this is, this is one of the reasons why Christianity has had such an impact on, on the world, is because it goes beyond just this distant God to um, an incarnate God in Jesus, to an indwelling God in the Holy Spirit. And we're going to find the ramification of that because it's a very powerful thing. And so here we have Jesus saying, you're, you're, you are going to experience the indwelling Holy Spirit. This was at the night of the Last Supper. And we, when the church actually experienced that in the second chapter of Acts, it totally changed everything. It changed a bunch of kind of, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? Um, 
not very strong disciples into very powerful disciples. The Holy Spirit changed their nature. And we're going to see why that's an important concept here in just a second. Excuse me. So the scripture says that we are no longer orphans. In other words, we're no longer walk, going through the world alone. Even if we are part of a family, in some ways we're alone. But now we aren't because we're connected with God. And so the Holy Spirit will be our defender. We'll have our back. That's what advocate means. And then we know that the Holy Spirit will be our comforter. And the Holy Spirit can comfort us in ways that no one else can. The Holy Spirit will comfort us because the Holy Spirit can indwell us and know our hearts like no one else can. And the Holy Spirit knows what we need to hear, what we need to know, what we need to experience. The Holy Spirit knows how to comfort us. And the scripture says, in a way that is beyond our understanding. Nobody can do that but the Holy Spirit. And so we have this indwelling nature of God. Watching our back. Now think about that. I mean, just for a second. Watching our back. You know what that means? There, he's there for us. Comforting us in a time when we need comfort. And we're going to see why it matters that we have that comfort here in just a minute. But I want to also look at that verse that talks about the world. The world, it says, cannot accept him because it, is, it, it, it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. He lives with you and will be in you. Really, it's a very powerful implication, and it's a very clear meaning, and that is, without the Holy Spirit, well, here's the, here's the deal. The word translated here, of course, is cosmos, and what cosmos means in, the, in this context is the material world, all right? It can mean the universe. It can mean just Earth, but really what it means is the material world, the world of stuff, and what we're seeing here is that if you're living only in the world of stuff, you're not ever going to be able to see the world of, of the kingdom of God that is also here, that is only seen through spiritual eyes that are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so the clear meaning is, is if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't see the kingdom of God, even though we're told to dwell in it and to be citizens of it. And if you can't see the kingdom of God, that only leaves with you with the world of stuff a world that is going to disintegrate and be gone. But the kingdom of heaven and the Holy Spirit in us, as it blends with our soul, lives forever. It's our connection with heaven. And so we have advocacy, watching our back. We have comfort. And now we have the, the ability to enter and see the kingdom of of heaven, the kingdom of God, even in this life. Now, it's not clear. We're still, we're still made of stuff. You know, when they say we're made of star stuff, we have atoms in our body that could be, have been around for 13 billion years and, we're, and came from exploding stars. But that goes back. That goes back to the cosmos. We don't take that with us. What we do take with us is the Holy Spirit in connection with our soul. And that lasts forever, and that is the kingdom of God. And so here's why I, I, I wanted to kind of bring that out. Because this passage, as Jesus does, he speaks aspirationally. And what that means he, is he asks us to see higher things, to live beyond the stuff. And this is one of the things he said. Before long, the world will not see me, but you still will see me because I live in you. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments keeps them as the one who loves you. To the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. 
But the reason why we are called to, <coughs> excuse me, to see heaven and, and I'm in the kingdom of God, to see beyond the stuff is because God wants us, Jesus in particular is telling us that he wants us to then share that comfort with the world. In another scripture, just a few pages down, that's exactly what he says. I have comforted you so that you can comfort the world, so that you can comfort the people in your life. And so as we, as we continue on in this time, that seems like it's in some ways so much harder, even maybe than it was a year ago or two. But as we continue on in this time, and as civilization tries to push back into the old model, the worldly model, we have a calling. And that is to move beyond the lack of conscientiousness, move beyond the anti-conscientiousness, to be conscientious, to care for, love, and comfort the people in our lives. Because I'll share this with you in my experience, that if I'm having a discussion with somebody about the nature of God and comfort and, and love and all that stuff, and I'm essentially yelling at them and treating them as they're unworthy while I'm trying, you know, arguing with them, fighting with them, I've learned that they aren't very responsive to my input. But if instead I show them how to comfort, I show them how I care, I show them how I love by my actions in addition to the words, the comforting words of Jesus. And so I ask this every time, is there someone in your life that God has intentionally put there to be comforted by you? To have somebody be conscientious. You know, one of my, I've shared this over the years, but one of my pet peeves is when people don't use their blinkers to change lanes. And when they don't change lanes, now I go, not very conscientious in my mind. But when they do, I think, thanks for caring. I know it's, <laughs> I know it's an incredibly little thing. But still, I want to thank the Lord because he's caring and he wants us to do the same. So on this day, the 23rd day of the year 2022, let's find the way because people need it. People need Jesus. People need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit helps them to see beyond this stuff. And people need you. And so as we continue on, one step at a time, I told somebody the other day, I'm already tired of 2022 because of some of this stuff. They says, no, we're, we got so much opportunity. And you know what? They're right. So let's take the opportunity to be those people. But also along the way, if you need that comfort from God, which we all need, take the time in prayer and meditation. Take the time to be with him, to study his word. Take the time to let him comfort you. And he will in a way that is beyond your understanding. And so until next time, we'll see you in church. And hopefully by next week, things can be settled down. This week, we had a number of uh, of different manifestations of COVID um, in different people and different things. And we just decided let's not take the chance. But next week, we're back together if all goes well, and we'll make sure we let you know. All right, so take care. Let's have a quick word of prayer. Almighty God, we just give you thanks because you are the comforter. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, you make a connection with us that can then touch our hearts in a way that gives us the strength we need to be able to comfort others. And so we thank you for that. We thank you that you watch our back and that we're never alone when you're with us. And we thank you, Lord, that you help us see your kingdom. It's still blurry, 
But for those of us who have that Holy Spirit, that thinness between us and heaven is a little bit thinner because the Holy Spirit, we're looking at it through the Holy Spirit's eyes. So be with us, Jesus, and we give you the praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Everybody, I hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll see you in church uh, a week from the 23rd, a week from Sunday the 23rd. So bye-bye.